I want to thank all of these incredible leaders for joining us today. Bishop, thank you for hosting us, bringing them together. Um, I want to thank, of course, in front of uh, everyone, and always I want to thank uh, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Senator Dick Durbin, for being a part of this, but most importantly, for your long-standing work fighting for immigration reform in the United States Senate and, and on behalf of all of America. Um, Congresswoman, thank you for inviting us to your district and for your work always in D.C. and everywhere, um, requiring that everyone understands what is happening here, and um, you've been a national leader in that regard. Secretary Mayorkas, it has been wonderful to be with you today, and thank you for all of the innovation and the incredible work that you've been doing in such a short time at DHS. So I've asked these community leaders, these advocates, these fighters for human rights and for the dignity of all people to join us today so we could have a candid conversation. Um, many of you are aware that the President has asked me to to focus on the issues of the root causes of migration um, to the United States, and your work has been the work on the ground, tireless work, um, heartfelt work, I, and I know you've seen so much, and, um, and so we're going to have a candid conversation about what you see as being the reasons that people arrive here and anything else you'd like to discuss. Um, our administration, it is important to be clear is working to build a fair and a functional and a humane immigration system. We feel very strongly about that. And as you know, we inherited a tough situation. Um, in fact, right here in El Paso was the, 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 the launch of the child separation policy. You saw it as it rolled out on the ground in real time. Um, we have looked at a, a, a system where um, people have been housed in inhumane conditions over the last many years. Um, an asylum system that has been broken and that needs to be reconstructed. And um, in five months, we've made progress, but there's still much more work to be done. But we've made progress. Um, family reunifications, and the Secretary can talk about that, incredible work that we've seen that he has helped facilitate by expediting the processing at the border. Um, asylum determinations and, of course, improvements in the facilities conditions. Um, we've also made progress in addressing the root causes. Uh, as you know, I've traveled to Guatemala and Mexico in the last couple of weeks and met with the presidents of both Guatemala and Mexico to talk about our concern and our interest, um, recognizing that we are all uh, neighbors in the Western Hemisphere. And just as if you go into any community, what's going on with your neighbor will affect you. And um, that is the approach that we have taken. Coming out of the, the, the bilateral meeting, that we had in Guatemala. Uh, we created a first ever um, task force that is focused on, on corruption. I've met with civil society within Guatemala um, so they could also candidly share with me their concerns. Um, we also created a Young Women's Empowerment Initiative that I'm very excited about. And for obvious reasons, probably we all know why this is an important um, venture. And also a, a human smuggling and, and trafficking um, task force. In Mexico, uh, the president of Mexico has been very clear that he wants us to be partners on these issues. And we signed, at, coming out of the bilateral meeting with um, President Lopez Obrador, we signed a, a memorandum of understanding about the, the investment in resources and priorities that each of our countries will put into addressing the issues in Central America with a, a particular focus on Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador. Um, I approach our work with two principles. One, that most people do not want to leave home. They don't want to leave the place where they were raised, the language they know, the culture they know, the church where they go, their abuela, most people don't want to leave home. And when they do, it is usually for one of two reasons. Uh, because they are fleeing some harm, or because to stay at home means that they cannot satisfy the basic needs of their family. I approach our work with that principle and another principle, which is, and it, I hope this does not sound trite or corny, 
that we have the capacity to give people hope mm -hmm. and a belief that help is on the way. And so that those principles are, are a large part of what is informing the work that we've been doing addressing the root causes. But today, I want to hear from you. And you are on the ground. You have been on the ground. Um, and, and it is very important to the President and me that we maintain not only access, but um, a role for you leaders to participate in our leadership around what needs to be done and what can be done. So with that, I thank you all. Again, Bishop, I thank you. Um, if you don't mind me quoting scripture, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. So that is a lot of what informs our work. And of course, that crosses many faiths. And um, let that guide us with our work. Uh, so thank you all. And um, I will say I'll see you all later to the press. And we're going to start our conversation. Great.